while you're there, you know, you just put up with it. You, you, you sense that this is the way it is, and that's, that's how things go, and this is how the world works, because that's kind of all you know. Um, but it's not until you get some perspective on it that, that you see, you know, the, what the effects were and how really horrible it was overall. My experiences at Mamu of wanting to avoid trouble um, have impacted me as an adult and, and made me more anxious, more stressful, more driven to do things right than is necessary in the world. I should relax more. Relaxing, I, I never relax. Relaxing is very, very hard for me to do. I wonder if my children um, would have had a better childhood because they wouldn't have had a mom who was struggling with, um, first of all, depression and then the memories of, of abuse and going through that journey. Um, and they're not getting the best part of me as, as a mother. I could not understand why other people wanted to be a father, why they wanted to be a parent. That I, I it just, it, it wasn't there. I didn't see anything good about being a kid, and I did not want to subject anybody to being a child. And I recall, again, it's kind of a funny story, but I was in graduate school the first time I heard someone say that they had a happy childhood. And I burst out laughing. I thought that they were kidding. I thought it was really funny, kind of in a black humor sort of way. And, and they said, well, why are you laughing? And I just, what do you mean, why am I laughing? That's the most ridiculous thing I've heard of, a happy childhood. I mean, talk about an oxymoron. This is impossible. But looking back on it, honestly, I, I think something that is so traumatic to people that it completely wipes out that sense of wanting to foster the next generation it goes to the core of what a person is. And again, I kind of resent people taking that much away from me. The urge to kill myself was so extreme. Um, I would, and I, I was, I had visions of just, um, taking a kitchen knife and slitting all of my major arteries and just allowing myself to bleed out. I've been fortunate enough to be able to talk and to discuss with my, my father and my mother some of these things. Like, I, I asked my father point blank, you know, well, how many souls how many African souls were worth my soul? Was it a thousand African souls? When I go to church, the music is just deadly. The music just, particularly those songs, just brings me right back to it. I, I felt that this music is what was playing while we were being uh, mentally raped. And everybody else thinks these songs are so glorious and they just make my spine tingle and my eyes fill up with tears. They're just, it's painful. Uh, I went into severe depression uh, and, and did not, really didn't, didn't have a faith uh, as such. Uh, basically, at best, was agnostic, almost bordered on being, you know, uh, atheistic. And uh, very angry, uh, refused. Uh, I could not walk into a church without uh, having experiencing tremendous anger. And after about two years, I decided to try to start going back to church. I made sure that I stayed away from evangelical churches. Uh, I looked around um, at Lutheran uh, and Presbyterian churches. I visited those. Um, sometimes it was painful. The Bible is still a fascinating thing for me. Uh, because I understand how powerful it is in the life of people, especially missionaries. Um, it affects people's lives very, very deeply. And therefore, it's worthwhile for us to study it very carefully. And, and that's, what I, that's what I continue to do. And to me, that's even, that's even more effective than going to church and worshiping and all that stuff. Jesus tells.
Saul is on the road to Damascus to persecute Christians and he's struck blind uh, by the Lord and, and he becomes a Christian and he became Paul and, and uh, um, really the first missionary and he saw Christ and um, Christ appeared before him and I've often said that that's what would be needed to make me a true believer and, uh, and, and that is unfortunate I mean, it may be more realistic, but it's still, from my point of view, unfortunate to feel that way. And, and I lay that at the feet of those people. I admire people that, women who have been raped, who can go and talk about it with other people. It's too painful. I'm too ashamed of it. That, that sense of shame is just overwhelming. And that's as close as I can get to why I don't talk about other people. Is I was the victim, but it, I'm the one that feels the shame.